Hi, folks. Uh, what we have today is a PDA. Now, this isn't just any ordinary PDA. This is an InPath uh, barcode scanner with custom library software on it. Um, our librarians use this um, basically to scan books and perform inventory functions. Um, unfortunately, this one was dropped, and as you can see, the screen is completely shattered. Um, but it appears to be only the digitizer that's damaged. The actual LCD screen still functions. Um, as, you can, as you can see, it actually comes up to a startup screen. Actually, this is the hot sink screen. So it does work. Everything seems to be kosher. But it needs a new screen. Now, this device cost approximately, I don't know, $300 new. Uh, but you can still find these on the used market, but they're still quite expensive. Um, we're looking at over a hundred bucks at least. Uh, mainly because the software that's on it is irreplaceable. Um, this is actually broken twice. <laughs> uh, the first time it broke, the librarian was walking across the floor, and she touched the screen and zap took out the digitizer. I had a friend in high school who did the exact same thing with his handspring. Um, but anyway, so I brought it to my little uh, sh workshop and I tore it apart and I found that it was in fact a Palm 3 mounted in, the, in this custom case with the barcode scanner on the end. Um, so I went on eBay and I bought a Palm Pilot. I actually got two for one. I bought a Palm 3 and I yanked the screen out of one and the other one I kept aside. Now, just the other day she came to me in tears. Oh my god, I dropped it, I dropped it. I'm like, all right, relax, relax. <laughs> you know, we'll get through this. And sure enough, she had cracked the digitizer. So again, as you can you can clearly see it, it still works. The the screen is perfect. Unfortunately, it's the digitizer. And uh what we're going to do is we're going to take the other Palm 3 that I had bought in that lot. I think I got them for like $10 for both. And we're going to yank the screen out of this Palm 3. Um, luckily, they used, they didn't really do any customization to the insides. And it's just a standard off-the-shelf Palm 3. And I told her not to use these batteries because they don't last very long, but whatever. One of the problems with these earlier palms is they used volatile RAM to store um, to store data. Fortunately, the software is stored in a permanent portion. It has a modified ROM, and that contains the library software. You'll find that Telzones and other uh, retail barcode systems like this um, have basically the same setup where the um, the custom software is loaded in a ROM chip and they customize software ROM um, and a lot of times that software will all or that modified ROM will also contain um, additional functions that most palms don't have so we're going to go ahead and pull her apart and take a look at the damage um, Luckily, there's no there's no housing damage because to replace this thing, we're looking at several hundred dollars, and the repairs only cost ten dollars because, well, in this case, it doesn't cost anything. So there we got that apart, and we've got down to the bare board. So now we've got to, I believe it was just set together like this. clips in. So I've got to undo this ribbon cable here. This is the screen cable, or one of them. One of them is a digitizer cable, the other one is the um, LCD function. Okay, looks like we've got a damaged contact there. Keep, keep an eye on that when I put it back together again. So here we are. 
Now the screen assembly itself has to be detached from the board which is pretty easy to do. Yeah, just like that. Being careful not to damage any ribbon cables. Oh, here's the custom scanning device. This is actually not a laser scanner. This appears to be an LED scanner. Uh, probably a wise idea because it's lower power consumption. Right. Not having any luck here. I believe we just. Oh, wait. Maybe the display comes off. Yeah, there we go. Ah. Good. It was that easy. Didn't have to take this all apart. Oh! Manufactured in 2004. So we can now discard this display. It looks like I could probably separate the digitizer from the LCD, but I'm not going to do that. So now we're going to take apart our donor, palm 3. Now this Palm 3 was manufactured in 1998, if I recall. I did find one issue with this swap. Um, when I first put the other display in, I found that the, the newer Palm had a modified ROM chip, um, or a newer version, and it didn't have the mechanical contrast adjustment that the older Palm 3 had. And what they actually did was they used the um, the electronic version of the uh, contrast adjustment and uh, to use that you have to tap a hidden icon because what the hell I found this palm has a little memory slot here I didn't know they had that interesting what I was saying was um, because the contrast icon isn't silk screened onto this panel, uh, because it's, old, it's an older screen, you actually have to tap it and you have to know it's there. See, the, the, user, the user did not know that was over there, so she always had a hard time with it. Um, I'd always have to adjust the contrast for her because she didn't know how to do it. Just a side issue, not a big deal. And uh, looks like we have a different revision screen. Just slightly different. But I think it'll work. So we'll just pull off the, the connector here. Okay. And the screen should essentially fall out like so. That easy. I can. Oh, here we go. It's got a Motorola Dragon Ball processor. Let's see. I wonder if this uh, fake palm has the same processor. Dragon Ball VZ. Probably a different, uh, totally different CPU. MC68. Yeah, this has an XC68328. So, totally different chip. In fact, we'll compare the board side by side so we can see what's different. Um, totally different shape. Well, maybe not. Very similar shape. Um, but the board with the scanner is extended just a little bit. Just a little bit. Not much. But uh, the component layout is quite different. The, um, the newer board is made by Olympus. The old one is made by 3Com. The new one doesn't have the memory slot or the contrast knob. Um, and 
and in fact the memory chip is right here so this is the removable memory chip and they both have backup batteries um, obviously this one is completely dead oh wait I'm sorry this one does not have a battery but the Palm 3 does oh no it does there it is there's the backup battery but I, I can pretty much guarantee you they're both completely toast so let's go ahead and clean the screen up before we pop it in there. I'm going to get some alcohol. So I'm just going to use this microfiber cloth. Clean her up a little bit there. It's nice to get the edges clean because you can't you can't get there when um, when the unit's assembled. So it just gives it that extra bit of um, cleanliness. The screen's got a few scratches on it, but for a, a no-cost repair, I, I can't see a problem with that. There we go. <sighs> Careful. So you need, that is a very neat little scanning unit. I like that. Uh, wish I could add that to my own Palm. Palm Pilots with scanners built in, or uh, barcode scanners, um, still demand a premium on eBay. It's amazing how much they sell for. And I believe the district, the company that I work for, Probably paid about 700 for this stupid thing. Maybe more because they bought software with it. So, let me clip that in now. There we go. And uh, the display isn't glued in place, it just rests in this little tray. So, we can now put the uh, faceplate and buttons back in. Okay. And just to prevent the likelihood of any um, issues with these with the button pad because it's obviously been manhandled, um, I'm going to go ahead and clean surface of these electrodes or um, these little contact pads just clean them up with alcohol it's easier to do it now than later I'm trying to clean up the surface of these buttons a little bit now they're falling off so <laughs> be careful they're not um, they're not glued down or anything so I'm just put those back together rocker. Put that back in here. Oops. Right. So now we can carefully Set these back in. Getting fingerprints on these on these little pads can actually cause them to, to fail or not not properly respond to touch. So you got to be careful when working on these uh, types of units. We're going to go ahead and clean up the pad on the circuit board. Like so. And it just reduces the likelihood of any connectivity issues uh, with the buttons. And we just drop it all in there, like so. All right, look 
looking good. Although I don't like the way this is lining up. I'm going to get a lot of cookies for this. I know that much. <laughs> because for every time she's broken this thing, I've always come through and fixed it for her. So, this is at least a 12 cookie job. Doing it on my own time. I do that for people sometimes. Help them out. How about your fellow Americans? That's what I always say. Now we're going to get this on there. Okay. Snap it back together. If I wasn't filming this, I would have had this job done many, many minutes ago. It's a very quick job. All right. Screws back in, they're going to power back up. Set it on the cloth here. in there and power powered up. One thing that I found peculiar on Palm 3s is that the positive and negative terminals are both spring terminals, which is not correct. Um, it's actually, it actually causes a slight uh, contact issue with these. Um, I found I mean, the battery never quite le quite sits properly in the um, battery box. So, it's one of the things I've noticed. Now, let's see if she works. Hey, now we're going to calibrate it. Works just fine. So, we got our stylus. We'll tap once, tap here. What's nice is typically when I replace this, when I put new batteries in this, the contrast is almost always all the way down. At least that was the case with this panel here. But this panel must have a slight difference in manufacturing because it is much brighter. In fact, it is perfect. But there we go. Let's go ahead and set the time. At Eastern time. USA Eastern. Uh, daylight savings is off because this has the old schedule, which is incorrect. Um, and it can't be updated as far as I know. 2011, we are now looking at March, April, May, June 7th. And uh, the time is currently... Sixteen PM. Okay, done. And here we go. So it has the barcode software right here preloaded. And if I press any of these buttons, oh, it is a laser scanner. See. So you can see it's, a, it's it's obviously a wobble plate laser scanner, so it's not a rotating mirror. It has a wobble plate built in. Okay, that's pretty cool. Let's try to scan something with it. 
my water bottle. Okay. Yep, there's a barcode right there. I really want one of these. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Now I'm going to show you how the um, the contrast adjustment is missing. So if I if I tap right here, either here or here, there it is. There's a hidden button here. Because this doesn't have the um, the correct screen, the button's not there. But from here, I can I can bring up the adjust contrast screen. So. So again, I can get that on camera if I press here. Eh, it's working backwards. There we go. That brings up the the contrast button. But it just goes to show that even though it's not the correct display, it still works just fine. And I can scan to my heart's content and even burn out my camera's um, CCD if I wanted to, but I don't want to. And that was probably the most boring video I've ever made. But if it helps somebody, awesome. <laughs> there you go.